listening to Travel with the Backpacking Housewife podcast. I'm your host, Janice Horton. Welcome to episode nine. As I record this podcast in June 2021 in Scotland, the current COVID regulations on weddings are being tentatively eased and wedding fever is once again very much in the Scottish air. The idea of a traditional Scottish wedding as a typical Scottish wedding venue immediately conjures up images of men in kilts, a bridal bouquet of purple flowering heather, a misty lock, an old castle, a lone piper and ancient Celtic traditions. This is exactly the kind of wedding our eldest son and his lovely fiancée had in mind for their own special day in Edinburgh. Happily, my son and daughter-in-law's wedding did manage to go ahead, although with a small and intimate ceremony that was hastily brought forward to beat another national lockdown. The beautiful bride wore her traditional white wedding gown, and the handsome groom wore his Scottish Highland kilt. And the originally planned, much grander wedding celebrations, beside a beautiful misty Scottish lock, followed by a fabulous dinner, emotional speeches, a whisky and champagne fueled reception and music and Kaylee dancing along into the night with family and friends have all been postponed until the end of this year. So we still have that very much to look forward to. If you'd like to pop over to the corresponding post on my website, How to Plan a Romantic Wedding in Scotland at thebackpackinghousewife.com, then you can see my photos of the happy couple our son and his beautiful bride, on their beautiful but scaled-down Scottish wedding day. But after all the wedding cancellations and postponements and heartbreaking disappointments of 2020 and earlier this year, more and more couples are now feeling newly optimistic about planning their Scottish wedding. And locally, small weddings and garden weddings are trending for summer 2021. The Scottish Tourism Alliance is enthusiastically reporting a steady trend in overseas couples who are still very interested in choosing Scotland as their future wedding destination for 2022 and beyond, when restrictions have been fully lifted. Currently, restrictions are in place and the rules on how and where you can marry and how many guests are allowed at the marriage ceremony civil partnership registration or reception is relative to the tier level given to a specific area of Scotland. This means the rules for weddings are different across Scotland currently. Tier levels are from 0 to 4 and most of mainland Scotland and some islands are at Covid level 1. This would allow weddings of up to 100 guests. But government guidelines currently state that these limits are provided the venue size and layout will permit the necessary physical distancing between households to be in place. This means the number of people able to attend may be less. Some bigger cities and highly populated areas like Glasgow City, Dundee and Edinburgh still remain at level 2 due to the higher number of cases of Covid. A level 2 or 3 area would limit your wedding to 50 guests. You can check for current advice on the Scottish Government website. You can find the link in the transcript accompanying this podcast and on my corresponding post to this podcast on my website at thebackpackinghousewife.com. But I'm aware that you might be listening to this podcast in the bright new future. When restrictions have been eased even further, and you have already saved the date for your Scottish wedding with family and friends, while planning a romantic fairy tale wedding, perhaps even in a Scottish castle. Or you're on your way to Scotland right now for your romantic Scottish wedding beside a Scottish lock. Or maybe you're looking to renew your wedding vows on a special anniversary at the famous Blacksmith's Marriage Anvil at Gretna Green. I wanted to record this podcast specifically for all of you, my readers and listeners who are living elsewhere in the world with big dreams of coming to Scotland to get married or to renew your wedding vows on your special anniversary in Scotland sometime in the future and in what I believe will be a golden age ahead of us when Covid is finally under control and we are all able to travel freely again. So let's look at five great reasons to get married in Scotland. 
You can check out links to my sources for these trends in the transcript or on my website at thebackpackinghousewife.com. Reason 1. Getting married in Scotland is trending. 20% of weddings held in Scotland every year are between non-residents. In fact, over 130,000 couples living outside the UK have chosen Scotland for their wedding over the last 20 years and wedding venues across the country are reporting an increase in inquiries from far-flung places around the world from couples wanting to marry in Scotland. Reason two is that in Scotland you can get married anywhere you please. Over the years there has been a steady flow of couples from abroad choosing to get married in Scotland. Scotland provides the option of getting married anywhere you please, whether that's a mountain top, a beach, a castle or a zoo, and this is proving to be appealing to people both home and overseas. Reason number three, couples come to Scotland to marry as a nod to their Scottish roots. Venues stated that couples choosing to marry in Scotland prefer traditional Scottish themes and touches like thistles, tartan, whisky and Cayleys. Some grooms with no Scottish roots will still choose to don a kilt when getting married here. Reason number four, Scotland can offer both history and ambience. Most people dream that the most important day of their lives will be matched by the most marvellous and memorable setting possible. And in Scotland, we can make that dream come true. Reason number five, a place to say I do that will live with you forever. Newly married couples will often spend their honeymoon in Scotland and it can be the beginning of another love affair, this time with our country. So yes, it's absolutely true that Scotland is one of the very few countries in the world where people from all over the world, of all faiths and sexualities, can be married either indoors or outdoors whenever and wherever they wish in Scotland. This wonderful advantage and flexibility is the main reason that many couples from all over the world travel or elope to Scotland to be married and to have the kind of personalised and individual wedding that they've always dreamed of for their special day. Indeed, many couples from other parts of the United Kingdom, particularly England and Wales, wanting to create a unique wedding, will travel to get married in Scotland, in a castle or on a mountain or on a beach. This is because, right now, humanist weddings, out with of a registered venue, are not legally recognised in England and Wales, but they are legally recognised and indeed regularly performed here in Scotland. There are four types of legal wedding ceremonies here in Scotland. A civil wedding, conducted by an official from the local government office appointed to you by them. A humanist wedding, conducted by a non-religious person chosen by you. A religious wedding, conducted by a person of a religion of your choosing who practices in Scotland. And a multi-faith wedding, conducted by a person who has respect for all faiths and chosen by you. To be legally married in Scotland, you must meet the following marriage criteria. You and your partner must both be single, divorced, widowed, or have dissolved a previously legally recognised partnership. You must be over the age of 16. You must not be closely related to each other. And you must be capable of understanding the commitment of marriage. As a citizen of the UK, to marry in Scotland, you will need to apply for a marriage licence locally. If you're not a citizen of the UK, to marry legally in Scotland, you do need a visitor's marriage visa, and a marriage licence, which is also known as a marriage schedule, to comply with legislation. You can find out more about humanist weddings and humanist celebrants at the Humanist UK website. You can find current information on how to marry in Scotland on the Scottish Government website and at Destination Weddings Scotland website. Links are in the transcript or again You can find them in the corresponding post to this podcast on my website at thebackpackinghousewife.com. My top tips for choosing the perfect Scottish wedding venue. Get married at Gretna Green. Couples have been marrying here since 1754. 
Historically, runaway young couples eloped to get married over the blacksmith's anvil from the age of 16, when the marriage age in England was 18. More recently, most couples who marry here come from outside the UK. To seal the marriage, the blacksmith priest would bring his hammer down on the anvil, and legend has it that whomever touches the marriage anvil, then good fortune and the affairs of the heart will be yours. I must tell you that Gretna Green is actually not too far away from where I live in Scotland, and so I have indeed had the opportunity to touch the old anvil for luck myself. And so far so good, as Mr Backpacking Husband and I have just celebrated our 38th wedding anniversary. Originally, the matrimonial tradition was of hand fasting, in which the couple's hands would be bound together with a rope or a ribbon or a cord to symbolise their commitment to each other. And this was the origins of the phrase, tying the knot, which then enabled couples to be legally bound and to legally marry in front of just two witnesses. You can watch a hand fasting in the 1995 movie Braveheart in the scene where William Wallace secretly marries his sweetheart in the forest. These days, thousands of weddings and hundreds of marriage blessings take place every year within the famous blacksmith shop, which is still the original marriage house built in 1713. And you can still do a hand fasting ceremony at Gretna Green over the famous anvil as an informal gesture to celebrate a wedding anniversary or as part of your vows renewal to incorporate this special tradition into your Gretna Green wedding service from just £75, find out more at gretnagreen.com. Imagine getting married in a Scottish castle. It really is the stuff of fairy tales, and yet it's entirely possible. Imagine the wedding photographs in the video with a backdrop of ancient stone walls and roundels and turrets, and a Scottish piper on the battlements playing the bagpipes. In Scotland, there are a huge variety of castles available as a wedding venue, and you can find out more at Visit Scotland website. You can even get married at Edinburgh Castle, and what could be more romantic than saying I do in St Margaret's Chapel, within the most famous castle walls and in the oldest building in Edinburgh? Find out more at the Edinburgh Castle website. How about getting married in a baronial Scottish hunting lodge? or a grand stately home. Many have their own private chapel. Say your wedding vows in a wild Scottish landscape beside a humble stone bothy, or an iconic loch, or in a remote glen. All of this is possible in Scotland, and you'll still be within a walking distance of your wedding reception. Find out more at the National Trust for Scotland Weddings, and also from Visit Scotland forward slash weddings website. I have eight great ideas for you for a modern Scottish wedding. Number one is for an outdoor wedding. If you choose a wild outdoor Scottish wedding on the hills or in the glen, then you might want to consider wearing wedding wellies instead of heels. Number two is tartan. The bride and the bridesmaids might also want to wear tartan for their gowns, shoes, sashes or a warm woolen wrap or shawl. Number three is thistles and heather. My sister and her husband themed their wedding on Scottish flora and fauna, so why not theme your contemporary Scottish wedding on the thistle and the wild heather for your save the day notifications and invitations, venue and table decorations, cake decorations, buttonholes, corsages and the bridal bouquet itself. Number four, sweet gifts. Scottish tablet is a type of fudge in a gauze bag with a tartan ribbon and it makes a sweet wedding favour. Number five is wedding bands. Celebrate your Scottish nuptials by exchanging Celtic style wedding rings. Number six, entertainment. Book a Scottish band for your music. A friend of mine booked the Red Hot Chili Pipers, a bagpipe rock band for her wedding band. And why not hold your own version of the Highland Games to entertain your guests after the ceremony? Host a tug of war for the men and welly throwing for the ladies. 
Why not have traditional food? Serve Scottish fur to your guests. Serve Cullen skink, a taste of haggis, or a clouty dumpling. For dessert, serve creamy cranachan, filled with Scottish raspberries. Finally, why not honour your best man and matron of honour with a gift of a Celtic or Macintosh-inspired jewellery and the gift of a hip flask filled with a single malt whisky. So that was eight tips for a modern wedding, but what about old traditions? Let's look at eight old traditions for a Scottish wedding. First of all, the wedding sark. This is an old and unique wedding tradition because it's gifted from the bride to the groom. The sark itself is the shirt worn by the groom during the wedding and bought by the bride. In return, the groom will pay for the bride's wedding dress. This tradition is simple enough to achieve, making a great starting point if you want your day to feel as Scottish as possible. Next on the list of my old traditions is the look and booth. And this is a brooch gifted from the groom to the bride before the wedding as a show of love and dedication to the marriage. The brooch is traditionally made of silver and usually incorporates heart symbols or engravings. This is another simple gift option to make your day feel inherently Scottish. Of course, men wearing kilts are one of the most iconic parts of a traditional Scottish formal occasion and no more so than at a Scottish wedding. Many families will wear their own clan tartan, but it's not essential to do so, as many men will choose a popular tartan instead. Full Highland kilt outfits can be hired. The most popular tartans are the modern Douglas, the hunting Stuart and the black watch. The grey and heather-coloured tartan worn at my eldest son's recent wedding in Edinburgh was called Scottish Spirit. Nothing says Scottish wedding like hearing the sound of bagpipes being played by a piper in full Highland attire. Traditional song choices can include Mari's Wedding, The Highland Wedding and Lock Inside. It's traditional at a Scottish wedding for the bagpiper to toast the bride and groom to bestow good luck upon the marriage and the groom will then return the toast to the piper. Once the piper has played to the bride and groom at the top table, the bride will then also offer him a dram, for the piper to then perform a toast on the newlyweds. Another tradition is to drink whiskey from the quake. The newly married couple will each sip whiskey from the quake, which is a loving cup, to toast each other and to symbolise their trust in each other. In Scottish tradition, one of the most familiar features of the wedding bouquet is the presence of heather a wild plant that grows all across Scotland. This link with the Scottish identity has made heather an essential addition to any Scottish wedding. Of course, there will also be Cayley dancing at your traditional Scottish wedding. The most popular dances are the Flying Scotsman, the Gay Gordons and Strip the Willow. They also involve a lot of stomping and spinning and skipping and they're very energetic and most live wedding bands will have someone willing and able to show you all the moves and to get you up on your Cayley dancing feet. I do hope, whether you are the new future bride and groom, or long married and wanting to renew your vows, or planning to organise a special wedding anniversary blessing, that I have supplied you with lots of wedding inspiration and lots of authentic Scottish wedding ideas for your wedding in Scotland. Please do get in touch if you're planning a Scottish wedding, or if you've married in Scotland already. Email me through my contact page on my website at thebackpackinghousewife.com or get in touch through my social media channels. I'm on Facebook at The Backpacking Housewife. I'm on Instagram as Janice Horton Writer. And if you're on Twitter, you can tweet me at Janice Horton. That's J-A-N-I-C-E-H-O-R-T-O-N. And come and travel with me here on Travel with the Backpacking Housewife podcast. Subscribe and follow for inspiring and informative new episodes each week in which I'll be discussing ways to plan for and to prioritise travel and adventure in our lives and in our new future, in what is set to become a new and golden age of travel.